Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you our detailed image quality breakdown of these two Battis wide angle options, the 25 millimeter F2 and then the 18 millimeter F2.8. Now, both of these share a classic um, Zeiss optical arrangement and that they are both a Distagon design. However, they do have obviously very different optical formulas in terms of the number of elements and groups that those elements are in and quite a different focal length. Although, you know, 25 millimeters and 18 millimeters doesn't seem like a, a huge difference. We'll find as we look at this uh, particular comparison here that there certainly is a difference in framing. So uh, I encourage you to stay around until the end of the episode where I'll give you a really brief uh, recap at what we saw, kind of position both of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out after this episode and I'm going to give you as kind of the final segment on both lenses, I'm going to give you an individualized review of each that will stand alone, but will refer back to the build and handling episode along with this particular image quality episode. So let's jump in and let's look at some images together. Okay, we're going to take a look at the uh, performance from the two Battis wide angle options here. But first, I want to just show you something, and that is that uh, the way that, of course, Sony works is that they do embed raw um, pro or profiles into the raw files. And so, for example, if you go to uh, this lens correction and profile, you will see built-in lens profile applied. And so there is some measure of correction that's already there. However, you'll see that the in-camera profile here for the Battis 18 millimeter is, it's left a fair bit of a mustache style distortion pattern that's there that you can see. And so, you know, the in-camera correction has been insufficient. Now here next to it, I'll see, this is what you'll see most typically when you open the raw file, because not only does it put the built-in lens profile, but it will automatically select the, uh, the software profile here in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, or I suspect any other similar software program. So byproduct of this is that, you know, you see you have a better distortion correction, although it's not geometrically perfect. But as we saw, there was a fair bit of distortion there to correct. But let me just throw these side by side uh, and show you that while the distortion obviously looks better in this latter one, I really feel like there's an overcorrection when it comes to the vignette. And um, this uh, particular profile, it's just maybe a little bit too enthusiastic to where you have almost an unnatural lightening of the edges. And I found that to be true at various aperture values. Uh, let me just show you here for these other aperture values as well, that they just, they're just a little too uh, lightened in the corners. And you can see if we go through the pattern, um, you know, all of these various apertures, you can just see here looking at the thumbnail, they're a little too brightened. And so um, it's a little bit less extreme, you know, with uh, the 25 millimeter F2. And I'll quickly show you those here as well. And so if we compare them side by side here, and so what I've done is I've put the, on the left side, what comes out of the camera without the secondary profile attached. So this is just the in-camera profile. And so as you can see here, uh, distortion is much more moderate. There still is a little tiny bit of a bulge that's left. We can see that on the distortion level, the 25 millimeters with its less extreme focal length, it has less distortion natively, thus it corrects better. And also, if you look, and let me just go back here to the thumbnail grid, you can see, for example, and I'll just highlight these two things. So you can see that this is the corrected profile attached, corrected of the 25 millimeter F2 and the 18 millimeter F2.8. And as you see these kind of lining up over the top of each other, you can just see how that the 18 millimeter correction pattern is just too enthusiastic. I'm not really seeing that much with uh, Lightroom, and of course I'm not thrilled about it. So we will compare the corrected versions um, just because they'll look better in terms of distortion. But just note here, and I'm gonna switch sides. We have a consistent pattern with the 18 millimeter on the left, 25 millimeter on the right. So in this, we're really looking at wide open contrast and uh, resolution here. 
Now, as you can see here, uh, wide open means two different things. Uh, on the 18 millimeter, that means f2.8, but as you can see on the 25 millimeters, that means f2, which is twice as bright. And as you can see, it has a shutter speed of 1 800th versus a shutter speed of 1 400th. And so again, you ha you're having to, um, you'll, if you'll step that down, that's a full stop difference in shutter speed that's needed. So f2 and f2.8 aren't obviously completely equal. But what we're going to see as we look here at the center of the frame is that the uh, 18 millimeter is fantastic wide open in the center of the frame. It has you know pretty much perfect contrast and resolution center of the frame. Now on the resolution front, we actually have a very good result here from the, F, the 25 millimeter F2 but what is lacking a little bit is the contrast by comparison which you can see doesn't nearly match that on the left and neither technically does it in resolution as well now if we move off to the side however there's a pretty vast difference between center performance on the 18 millimeter and edge performance and you see that there is a unfortunately a pretty severe erosion of image quality towards um, both sides of the frame. Whereas the 25 millimeter, we see that while it doesn't have quite as much bite in the center of the frame at F2, it's actually really good on the edges by comparison. And so 25 millimeter is going to give you the most consistent performance across the frame, but the 18 millimeter gives you a little bit more of a bite in the center. Now, if we move to um, and kind of do an apples to apples, same shutter speed, same aperture value here, center of the frame, you know, I th the 18 millimeter to me still looks better. Um, it, there's just not quite the same degree of contrast center of the frame for the 25 millimeter, but edge of the frame, it's it's not even close. The, um, the, uh, the 25 millimeter is much stronger at the edges of the frame. Now, if we stop down to F4, uh, we're going to find basically the exact same story. Um, 25 millimeters is denoted more by just a very consistent look across the frame, great in the corners, you know, great in the center, but not as fantastic as the uh, the 18 millimeter. Now, to be fair, the 18 millimeter, it's really towards the very edge of the frame where you're starting to see that erosion of image quality. You know, even if we look here, it's still very good. Not quite as good as the 25 millimeter, but it's really that last third where things fall off. And of course, in the very extreme corners, that's a pretty soft result. Whereas in the 25 millimeters, it's a pretty much near perfect result. Now, if we step on down to f5.6, we see that the edges of the 18 millimeter are improving, but when you have the 25 millimeter right beside it, they look still pretty weak by comparison. Now, I suspect in the case of the uh, 18 millimeter, because uh, we saw there is a pretty strong amount of distortion there, that some of this is field curvature, um, you know, and so we can see that towards the edge of the frame here, but you know, along where the center is that the image quality is better. It's when you move off to the edge of the frame where things have really started to act up more. So to further explore that, um, I'm putting the what comes right out of the camera on the left side and then the you know Adobe corrected on the right. And so um, is that correction, you know, kind of over enthusiastic correction, is it robbing some contrast? And I think the answer to that is yes, to some degree, um, kind of, you know, overexposing those edges through that over aggressive uh, profile for vignette is robbing it of some contrast. That being said, it's obviously not really taking away resolution um, because the resolution just isn't isn't there. And so we can see even in this version that you're, you know, it, it's it's a little bit better because you can see more contrast because this is overexposed because of that over aggressive. But of course, you're also ending up with this. And so, you know, it kind of depends on your subject. I would just, my personal recommendation is that, you know, if I own the lens, I would just dial back the correction um, of the vignette a bit manually, and that should help to solve that problem. Now, one other thing that I noted uh, with these two lenses, not just in this scene, although snowy scenes really, of course, tend to exaggerate this, but I noted it in other scenarios as well. And that was that the 18 millimeter tended to render a little bit cooler. 
And, and so, um, you know, just this, I don't know, I would say this is the more neutral result here on the right from the 25 millimeter, the 18 millimeter just skews a little bit cooler. Um, you know, not a, a huge deal, they're, they're not far off, but there is a difference in the way that they interpret um, light and color. Now, since the uh, close-up image quality could be affected somewhat by field curvature, I thought I would show you an infinity comparison. You now, here we have f2.8 on the left, we have f5.6 on the right. And so in this case, of course, with a deeper depth of field to work with, that field curvature might be less of an issue. So what we can see, of course, is that while, you know, over these couple of stops between f2 and f5.6, we have gained a little bit of contrast. We can see that resolution in the center of the frame is already fantastic wide open, and it, it, the contrast improves, but the resolution was already, you know, pretty close to perfect. So as we move out towards the edge of the frame, um, you know, here we have the, the ability to have pretty much the same depth of field all along here. And so we can see that the corners definitely on the f2.8 result, they are softer. And, you know, this should be the same um, depth of field here that we have on the other. And so you can see f5.6, it has improved. Um, let's look at the other side as well. Um, and here you can see there's definitely more contrast on the right result. And so it's better, um, and certainly there, there would be little to complain about, about that particular result. And here, you know, we have, we're kind of affected somewhat by depth of field, but mostly what you're seeing here is contrast improving. But I would say that at smaller apertures, that that field curvature issue obviously becomes less of an issue. And as a result, what we see here at infinity is that we, I would say, have a better result across the frame with the f2.8 wide open result than we did at close focus distances. So what about coma performance? Here I've shot an identical scene and I will show you f2.8 versus f2.8. So let me just first say there is, and there is an advantage for the f2.8 version um, and that is that it's 18 millimeters. So as you can see in shooting the night sky, you've got room for a lot more stars to be included um, with the 18 millimeter than you do on the 25 millimeter. The advantage for the 25 millimeter is that it lets in twice as much light with its f2 maximum aperture. So as a result here in this particular comparison, I could drop the shutter speed and get the same, you know, basic luminosity with a you know half the shutter speed at f5 which is going to help to eliminate movement of the stars even more so so if we look at the stars themselves uh, between the 18 millimeter and the 25 millimeter we see that we have uh, a fairly similar result towards the center of the frame on the 18 millimeter i would say there is just a little little bit more stretching and um, but if we look towards the edges of the frame what we're going to find is that there is obviously at, at f2 there's a little bit more pronounced um, coma on the uh, the 25 millimeter than there is on the 18 millimeter the 18 millimeter has a little bit of a uh, chromatic you know edging starting to take place here towards the edge of the frame just a little bit of wing starting to grow but we can see uh, that, you know, for example here, that they're a little bit more pronounced on the 25 millimeter. Now, obviously when you looked at it on a global level, you, you couldn't see that so much, but it definitely is more coma on the, uh, the 25 millimeter at F2. However, once you stop down the 25 millimeter to F2.8, we see that that you know, coma has cleared up. And so it's got no more distortion than what the 18 millimeter does. But what we are finding is that it also has, towards the edges of the frame, it has obviously that better contrast and better resolution. And I would say that, you know, looking at this towards the edge of the frame, we actually see less chromatic distortion there on the 25 millimeter um, now that it is stopped down to equivalent aperture of f2.8. And so I would say in terms of the versatility of what you can get out of them, the 25 millimeter will probably give you your, the better result in that you have the option of shooting it wide open and in many situations that may be okay. But if you stop it down to f2.8 equivalent aperture, you actually get a crisper result and a little bit cleaner result out of the 25 millimeter. And so of the two, I would say that in many ways it is the best, better astro lens, even though it doesn't go quite as wide. 
And now for landscape shooting, I wanted to show you a comparison. Uh, these are taken a few minutes apart and the um, 18 millimeter was the first one on there. So there's a little bit more color in the scene. Um, you can see the sun is just a little bit higher and thus it just infused a little bit less color into the scene. So I, I wouldn't read too much into that. What I'm looking at here more is the amount of detail and also how it handles the, the bright sun in the frame. And so as we can see, both of these have done a pretty good job here without, um, you know, kind of breaking down in terms of their contrast. And, um, you know, we can see there's a little bit of a ghosting effect there on the 25 millimeter. Uh, and, you know, basically that's what I found that it's, it's fairly well controlled, but not perfect. Of course, for both of these, this is obviously a, a beautiful result. And so um, no concerns there. Now, what I found is in extreme situations, neither one of these lenses is, is completely a flare resistant. Uh, it's mild. In this case, you can see we have got a, you know, a couple of prismatic ghosting effects here. We have a little bit of veiling at the epicenter. What we do have, however, is a also a very nice looking sunburst effect there. We can see that globally contrast is held up just fine. This is the 25 millimeter. Here's another little, you know, blob of light down here. And so, um, you know, under extreme circumstances, they will both let in a little bit of light. Here's one from the 18 millimeter. This is in DC. And you can see once again, nice sunburst effect up here, but you can see there is some light, you know, uh, ghosting that's taking place. Very little amount of veiling there, um, but there is definitely some ghosting that has happened. However, once again, our global contrast is held up fine. And I have actually post-processed this image, but you can see there's incredible amount of detail in it. And of course, obviously tons of latitude for processing the image. And so in this case, I would say this is mild in terms of the ghosting um, and the contrast is held up. And so this is really a pretty good result. Now going back to the 25 millimeters here for a moment, um, obviously the, the ability to combine with the, the Sony's you know, 42 megapixel sensor here on the Sony a7R Mark III, it gives you the ability across the frame to resolve just tons and tons of detail. And so as you can see, I mean, if we're zooming into a very small area of the image, but you can see at a pixel level that there's, there's tons of information that's there Everywhere we look across the frame, there's just a lot of detail that is resolved. And so both of these lenses are really nice matches to the high resolution sensor um, of these, you know, the demanding, this demanding 42 megapixel sensor. And so, you know, pretty impressed by that. Now, one thing to note is that if you ever prioritize being able to get close to your subject and to kind of throw a background out of out of focus the 25 millimeter is the better option in that it's you know maximum magnification figure is basically double that of the 18 millimeter you can you have a longer focal length and you can focus down closer and so as a byproduct of this you know and this isn't actually right at minimum focus i was focusing on this little bud area here at f2 but even so not completely completely at minimum focus, you can see that we have not only been able to blur out the background, but the quality of that out of focus area is really quite nice. Now switching over to the 18 millimeter, we find that the story is really the same. Um, here at this landscape distance, you can see that as we look up here in the trees, uh, just you know, great information that's recorded there. And so in this example, I mean, we're very, you know, ever so, so slightly softer here towards the edge of the frame, but there's still lots of lots of detail that's there. And so, um, you know, and also some distortion, um, and that's a kind of a keystoning effect that's taking place there. But we can see that there's, there's tons of information throughout this scene, you know, and so for example here, these two people are just dots, you know, in the scene, but you can zoom in and see that they are resolved quite nicely. And you can even see their, their bottle of water there on the picnic table, which there's no way you can see that if you zoom out of the frame. This is at f3.2. And so it shows that under the right circumstances, you know, that that distortion that I showed you, it can be corrected just fine. And we have nice clean lines in this image. This is actually shot in the White House. 
And once again, um, you know, if you zoom into the details here, I mean, wow. I mean, that's, that's tons of resolution, lots of, of detail there in the center of the frame. The center of the frame is exquisite on this lens. But even here, um, as we go towards the edge of the frame, you know, we've lost some image quality, but really the image quality is still very, very high here um, on both sides of the frame. Another shot from the interior of the White House. This is going up to the residence portion. And so let's take a look at old Bill over here. And uh, we can see that his portrait, nice portrait by the way, um, you know, colors look great, rich, and even here in the frame, we've got lots of detail looking over here at this light. And, and you can see, I mean, it's resolving lots of fine detail. Micro contrast is as per usual, a strength here for, um, this uh, 18 millimeter Battis lens. And so as we can see, both of these lenses offer very strong performance on high resolution bodies like the Sony a7R Mark III. And then of course, if you're shooting with, for example, the new Sony a7 III or a similar camera, you're going to also get excellent image quality. You just won't be pushing the limits. Both of these limit, both of these lenses can out-resolve the sensor of the a7 III. And with the a7R Mark III, they are, you know, they're not out-resolving the sensor, but they are resolving a large portion of the sensor as we could see and so um, kind of you know individualized performance in that in the center portion of the frame the 18 millimeter f 2.8 is just stunningly sharp it's incredibly sharp but we did see that however is that there's a bigger lag between center and corner performance with the 18 millimeter f 2.8 the 25 millimeter f 2.8 i don't know that it ever peaks quite as high as what the 18 millimeter does right in the center of the frame however what it offers is a very balanced um, image quality profile resolution profile across the frame it also has less distortion and a less complex distortion pattern uh, less vignette and, and so, you know, there's kind of some pros and cons with both. We saw that when we looked at night sky that you, with both of them wide open, one at f2 and one at f2.8, there was a very slight edge for the f2.8. However, if the 25 millimeter is stopped down to f2.8, it basically resolves almost all of the chromatic aberration, the coma, and the byproduct is, is that I think in terms of absolute versatility, that other than the focal length, it's not quite as wide as what I prefer for shooting the night sky, but if you're okay with the focal length, this is a very good performer for shooting Astro with and well worthy of that. Both lenses work for it. It's just you get a little bit more of an aperture advantage and thus a kind of an absolute performance advantage at f2.8 when you stop the 25 millimeter down. And so anyway, you know, strengths for both of them. And I would encourage you to look further. I've got um, image galleries from both the lenses with a fair number of images in them in a variety of situations. Take a look at those and I'll throw a description um, or linkage to those in the description down below. And of course, as mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I will be following this particular episode up with an individualized breakout review of each one of these lenses because they certainly stand on their own. And we'll refer back to these first two episodes just for those that want a little bit more detail in that. You can also follow me on social media and there's linkage in the description down below. And I'd encourage you to sign up for my newsletter that will keep you up on all of my reviews, but also things like giveaways and, you know, just information like that. And then finally, of course, if you haven't already subscribed, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. <music>